Hi all, in this unit we're going to start talking about rotational motion. So at this point in your uh, physics career, um, you will have talked about linear motion. Linear motion are things moving in a straight line. So I have an object and that go tra translates in a direction and we talk about a lot of quantities like its position, its velocity, how quickly it moved there, and its acceleration. So linear motion includes a lot of concepts. It includes kinematics, which describe the motion of an object. It has um, Newton's second law, F equals MA, which describes how an object will um, accelerate or change its velocity or change its trajectory based on outside force. Um, we also have energy concepts as well as momentum. So all of these things, um, it's kind of not it's sort of expected a little at this point that you've gone through that. Um, when we do rotational motion, it's very similar. We have a lot of these same concepts, but let's talk about what scenarios we use them in. So the most common scenario we're talking about when we're doing rotational motion is something that spins or rotates. Ooh, that wasn't a very good one. Let me try to draw a better circle. Um, so we're looking at objects that rotate, and that is, per, like, consider this like a wheel, maybe. A wheel that's spinning. It's like, it could be spinning on a car or something like that. Yeah, the wheel might have linear motion, or it might be sitting there and not moving, kind of like in a stationary bike where something just spins round and round and round. Okay, and we might think, okay, so how are we gonna describe the motion of something spinning that's rotating? And if, one way we think about it is we say, okay, so say we have some part of the wheel here, okay, and it's gonna rotate all the way down to say here. Okay, it's gonna travel the circular path and rotate there. And one way we could talk about it is to say, well, we can talk about the angle that it makes when it moves from here to here. That's the change in angle relative to some point of rotation. This we refer to as its angular position, and we call this delta theta, um, and that refers to its change in angular position. This is analogous to delta x, which is a change in position. Now, this is the Greek letter theta, if you haven't seen it before. So you should have seen it before in something like calculus. And we use, we use radians to measure this angle. We don't use degrees because the math ends up being simpler if we use radians instead of degrees. Okay. Um, or sometimes we use the term rad for radians, shorthand for radians. Okay. We can also talk about how quickly the angle is changing, which we call... Um, we look like this, the rate that which the angle changes per unit time, we give this a letter, Greek letter omega, and we call this the angular velocity. So this is the rate at which the, the, the angular position is changing with respect to time. It's similar to velocity. Velocity is the rate at which it, the position changes with time. So if, the, if it's spinning faster, like the, the same angle is being swept out in a shorter amount of time, or it's sweeping out more angles, more radians in a given amount of time, then we say it has a higher angular velocity. Okay, And similar to linear, we also have angular acceleration, which is the change in angular velocity per time, because I might be spinning faster or spinning slower, like speeding up my spinning. Um, like if I'm on a bicycle and I'm pedaling, I may start slow, the wheel's rotating slow, and then it rotating faster and faster and faster. We call this, uh, we use the Greek letter alpha to represent this, and this is uh, angular acceleration. Should also talk about units here. Angular velocity is measured in radians per second and angular acceleration is measured in radians per second squared. So just like in linear motion where you have meters, meters per second, meters per second squared, we've got radians, radians per second, radians per second squared.
Okay, good. In the next video, um, we're going to go through the kinematic equations. We're going to go through kinematics to describe the equations we use to relate each of these variables. And they're actually very similar to the linear kinematic equations.